Just a disclaimer, I just want to let you know that of course I'm not a doctor or a physician and this is just my personal experience and don't take any of this as medical advice. I'm just really excited to share my birth story with you. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you my birth story with my third child. I had a natural labor with her. With my son, I had an epidural and my oldest daughter is adopted. So this is my second birthing experience and let me tell you, it was a good one and it was an intense one. The intention with this video is to hopefully clear the air for people with fear when it comes to birth. So first of all, I think birth stories are amazing. Any form of birth, however it happened, I just think they are the most fascinating and Powering stories ever and so with this story since it was such a positive experience I want to share it with you guys in hopes to take some of the fear away from the stories you've heard since you were four years old about how horrible natural labor is and all that so I went into labor with her on Valentine's Day which was a big joke to us because we kept talking about her going into labor with her on Valentine's Day because since my husband and I started dating we've always done the same thing on Valentine's Day gone to the same restaurant and we've always had a super good time Yes, Dada! Da, da, da. Well, on Valentine's Day in the evening, um, I started having some pretty regular contractions. So backtrack, I had an appointment that morning and the midwife had talked to me about trying to kickstart labor. I was over 39 weeks. She said, you know, she's fully formed and fully ready to go. Um, and I wouldn't normally have accepted a membrane mm -hmm. sweep, but um, with my previous pregnancy, my son was a pretty large baby and he got a little bit stuck during delivery. And so they wanted to avoid that at all costs and make sure that she wasn't gonna be an even bigger baby and it turns out she wasn't she was more than a pound less than he was so or right about a pound less than he was so anyways um, I had really sporadic contractions during the day they were you know 45 minutes apart and then they were gone and so it wasn't anything really you know set in motion and so I didn't think too much of it. Um, by about 5 o'clock, I started to notice them more regularly and a little bit more intense than they were before, but still nothing I couldn't handle. I cooked supper. Everything was fine. So right about 7 o'clock, um, my mother-in-law was actually there. She had eaten dinner with us, and she was just going home, and uh, they started to really kick up after that. They started to get longer, stronger, more intense, and definitely more regular. Um, I wasn't feeling very good. I was feeling kind of sick to my stomach. I couldn't get out of the bathroom. Um, and it just kind of hit me like, this is happening. So we called my doula, who was also a certified midwife, and told her kind of what was going on. Um, my husband was getting the kids ready for bed. And she's like, we'll stay on the phone through a contraction, and we'll see kind of where things are at. So I couldn't talk through the contraction and she was like, all right, I'm going to come, head your way, get your car packed, get everything lined up. So my mom came over to take care of the kids and by the time she got there, I was on all fours. They were probably about five to ten minutes apart and that was just comfortable for me. It helped alleviate some of the pressure and I definitely wasn't talking. So we get in the car and that was definitely the most intense car ride of my life. My husband thinks it's hilarious because... <laughs> And thinking back, it is kind of funny. In the car ride, I was having really regular contractions. Five minutes, ten minutes. Um, okay, well, really regular, meaning they were coming and coming. I couldn't tell you exactly how far apart they were at that point. Probably about five minutes. So, during the contraction, I was super hot. I mean, like, so hot. I was like, air conditioning! Hot, hot, hot! And so he would blast the air conditioning and as soon as it was over my body was like kind of in shock from what was going on and I was freezing and I'd be like heat heat and it was like hot cold hot cold the entire way there and we live an hour from the hospital that I gave birth at so it was kind of intense um, we hit on the way to our hospital there's like five red lights that you have to go through and we hit every single one at a red light. I was like just yelling. I was like, go through the red lights. I don't care. I spun around in my seat, took my seatbelt off. And I was like, if we get stopped by a police officer, he's going to understand because there's literally like a baby coming out right now. And I was slightly concerned that I might be delivering in the car at this point because it was definitely really intense. But just a disclaimer, it's like a good intense. And what I mean by that is yes, it's painful. But with the natural labor, you don't have time to think about the what ifs because you're just so focused on that next contraction and doing lots and lots of preparing ahead of time going, okay, this is what's going to happen. This is a good pain because you know that the pain is moving the baby through your body. And so just mentally preparing yourself and giving yourself 
in your mind this I'm gonna have a positive birth attitude it's going to go better with a positive attitude and with knowing what's going on that this is natural it's supposed to be happening to your body so just go with the flow so back in the car <laughs> um, we get to the hospital, there are no parking spots. So my husband's like, I'm gonna drop you off at the door. This terrifies me because I'm like terrified I'm gonna give birth, you know? So my husband has to park the car somewhere else or the car will inevitably get towed. So he drops me off at the front door. I see a woman in the hospital. I'm like, I don't care who that is. I'm gonna just ask her to stay with me until my husband gets back. So praise the Lord, it ended up being my doula. I just couldn't see her from that far away. So she was there, she stayed with me until my husband came he was like running we went up the elevator I threw up in their trash can in the hallway so um, that's kind of my telltale sign I've noticed from my previous birth when I'm about to give birth I throw up that's just what happens I threw up in that trash can we go up the elevator I threw up in another trash can and then we get to the front desk area. Let me just say the doula, my midwife, and the nurses on staff were fantastic. So we get up there and they clearly see I'm in labor. My husband answers some questions and the nurse actually laid on the floor so that I could be on all fours to monitor the baby. So she's laying on her back, I'm on all fours, she's got the monitor on my belly and she was basically crawling with me to my room and every few steps I would have to get down on all fours again and she would lay down and she'd be like, you're doing such a good job, your baby looks great. And I just can't tell you how much I appreciated her extra effort and wasn't like making me stand or sit in a certain position to make sure that the baby was great. She was fantastic. So we get to my room and um, I ended up bringing along a birthing gown. It was essentially a large nightshirt. I do not like hospital gowns. I did not want to wear one where I'm getting all air in the back. I just don't like that. <laughs> I try bouncing on the birth ball. I hit transition as I was hitting the hospital, which if you don't know is the most painful part of labor. Transition is basically where contractions are back to back to back and you don't really get a break. It's a very exhausting part of labor. Having contractions while sitting on the birth ball, I didn't want to move. When I was standing up, they were trying to help me move, maneuver to different positions, but it was just too painful to move. I wanted to stay in the same spot. Little known tip, you should definitely move even if you don't feel like it because it just plain helps maneuver the baby down the birth canal. Now. So I'm on the ball. They've convinced me to try a side laying position. That is crazy painful. Way more painful than sitting on the ball. So I was like, nope, I don't want to do that. They tried a squatting position. I was like, that is way too hard, way too painful. Don't want to do that. And at this point, which one of the perks of not having the epidural is you can actually feel when you have to go to the bathroom. You don't have to have a catheter. So it's like, I really have to pee. Please help me get to the bathroom. So they helped me get to the bathroom, and I'm not gonna say that sitting on the toilet like alleviated pain, because it didn't. But it alleviated this pressure in this certain way where it was like less uncomfortable to labor. I was like, I don't wanna leave the toilet. This feels like so much better. And if you think about it, what a natural way to give birth, right? Like that just seems like such a natural gravity assisting way to deliver a baby. So I sat there for a while and they convinced me I should go back in the other room, try some different things. My midwife, or excuse me, my doula was doing this amazing massage on my back. This amazing woman did this for like hours, okay? My labor from start to finish was about seven hours. I labored at home for about four and I labored at the hospital for about three. And so she rubbed my back and rubbed my back and rubbed my back and it was so helpful. So I'm back to the birth ball, I'm bouncing on the birth ball, and that went on for a while. I was really, really exhausted at this point, and I was dozing in and out of contractions. Um, my doula was an absolute essential part of my birth. She had this amazing, soft-spoken voice where she was just doing things before I needed them and helping my husband to get things and do things that I needed him to do. It was this really peaceful experience where it was just my husband, myself, my midwife, my doula, and one nurse who was kind of off to the side and lesser until I needed her. Her. And again, wherever I was, she was happy to just assist the way I needed her to monitor the baby. So that was wonderful. It convinced me again to try the squatting position. I really didn't care for that position either. I was like, you know what, I really have to pee again. And I remember my doula saying, you know, you can just pee here and that just totally freaked me out. I don't know why, there's obviously a lot of birth stuff going on that wouldn't have been that weird. I was like, no, I really don't want to do that. I just want to 
pee in the toilet like a normal dignified person. <laughs> so we go back to the bathroom. It was an intense walk, I'm not gonna lie. Um, my husband was like holding my arms up so that I didn't have to use so much pressure on myself. I get back to the toilet and then it's like whoosh my water broke like this intense waterfall it's a very bizarre feeling when they say gush they mean gush it's like a giant water balloon is inside you it's like whoosh, everywhere as soon as my water broke my midwife was like you need to get off the toilet right now i basically dropped off the toilet onto all fours and i felt the need to push so i pushed and her head came out everyone says like that ring of fire is horrible you're gonna feel it. it's the worst part of labor and you know what like i i knew where she was i knew she was about to crown and i was like this is where it, i'm gonna feel it this is that ring of fire everybody talks about but here's the funny thing. I was like, I'm about to feel the ring of fire that they're all talking about. And my pain was completely the contractions. I know this sounds ridiculous, but I did not feel pain pushing her out. Like I felt pain in the contraction, which all my contractions I was feeling in my back. But her actually coming out was not painful. Not painful. Her coming out was relief. So her head comes out, I'm on all fours, my midwife is to the side of me, and she goes, her head is out! And I couldn't speak at the time, but I want you to know, in my mind, I was like, I know, I just did that. <laughs> because my son at that point, when I was in labor with my epidural birth, had gotten caught on his shoulder, I was terrified that that would happen again, and I didn't wait for the next contraction. I pushed her out in that second push, and she came out, and they caught her in a towel on the bathroom floor at the hospital and that is how she was born um, it was wonderful it was amazing and the moment she came out and I mean the moment I felt zero pain zero contraction pain no like low pelvic pain nothing it was like nothing had happened at all which was wild I was not expecting that at all and I was looking at this beautiful baby. She had brown, curly hair. She was so pretty when she was born. And I know all moms say that, but seriously, like, you know, babies are supposed to be like really goopy and covered in all this stuff. And she was so pretty. And it was this amazing moment where I had this rush of adrenaline and these crazy amazing hormones. And I felt like the coolest person on the planet. And it was so different than my epidural birth because the epidural birth definitely numbs some of those hormones that come through and after my epidural birth I was tired and drained and I wasn't feeling like this and after her birth I was like I had a, an adrenaline shot I felt so good I mean I just really really did feel amazing so her cord was really short I couldn't pick her up right away and I really wanted to wait for the cord to stop pulsating to cut it which felt like an eternity it took a few minutes before we could cut the cord um, I was shaky so my husband actually is the first one who picked her up and carried her into where the birthing room was. It was so funny because it was like a bunch of my friends got together to help me have a baby. The nurses were just talking and laughing and the midwife was fantastic. And we get back out there and I completely forgotten about the placenta, by the way. I mean, like completely forgot about it. And so I still have like the umbilical cord hanging out, not thinking anything about it. And they were like, okay, why don't you try and see if you can push the placenta out? And I was like, okay. And so I was expecting to do some like formal thing to push the placenta out. I don't have any recollection of pushing the placenta out with my son, so I assume it came out with him being born. So the midwife comes over with this giant stainless steel bowl, like think like you're gonna bake bread with a giant stainless steel bowl, that's what it looks like. And I'm standing up next to the birthing bed and she sets it between my feet and she goes, why don't you just give it a little push and see if it comes out? I was like, okay. <laughs> And I gave one push and it was like, wham, into the bowl. <laughs> like, I've never seen a placenta. It was very intriguing. It looks like a giant steak. Bigger. It would have been interesting to stand on a scale before I had pushed out the placenta and then afterwards and seen if there was like, you know, they say it's about the same weight as your baby. So that would have been pretty crazy to stand on there and be like seven pounds heavier and then seven pounds lighter within a minute or two. 
that was pretty much it. Um, I felt fantastic after she was born. We had the most amazing birthing team. I still think really fondly about my doula and my midwife and the nurse that was there and it was just really overall a fantastic experience. So having experienced both the epidural birth and the natural labor, I would never go back to an epidural. Now having experienced the difference between the feeling afterwards and um, just the ease of labor, just being able to feel where the baby is and what's going on is a thousand times better than having an epidural birth. Um, my epidural didn't even go super well anyways, and if you're interested in hearing my epidural birth story, let me know down in the comments because it's a pretty intense one as well. Um, and this one was just so amazing. If every birth like this went after this went like this, that would be amazing. I couldn't have asked for a better experience. I hope this video encourages you for your birth journey, whether or not you choose an epidural or natural or you have a C-section or however your baby comes into the world is amazing. Just know that as a mom, you're amazing. You're doing an amazing thing by bringing a child into the world no matter how your baby comes here. And I just hope that it takes some of the fear out of labor. Your body is made to give birth. It is made to do this amazing thing. And it is so, so cool once the baby is born. You are just gonna feel like the most amazing person in the whole world. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope this inspired you to have the best labor that you can. Just keep in mind to have a positive attitude about it. Keep reaffirming to yourself what kind of birth you wanna have. Pray about it, think on it, imagine what your perfect labor would be like. And the more that you think on that and the more you basically command your body, like this is what's gonna happen, we're gonna do it like this, this is gonna be a peaceful labor, the more your labor is going to look like that. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more content, and I will see you in our next video. Bye.